Hello and welcome to Treasure Maps 1. My name's Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Let's say that I've exported some data from some accounting system, ERP system, CRM system, and let's say that I want to use this data in a report. All right. Um, the key thing to observe is that the labels are different. Here we have account names. Here we have financial statement labels. So what happens when the labels are different between point A and point B? How do we get from point A to point B? Well, one option would be to write unique formulas for each report value, right? We would go equals this plus this plus this, enter. Equals this plus this, enter, and all the way down. Well, there's a couple problems with this approach. First of all, it's not very efficient because I'm having to write a unique formula for each of these report values, right? It's not like I can just write one formula and then fill that formula down. That's not gonna work. I'm writing unique formulas for each cell value. So it's inefficient. The other problem is it's fragile, right? What happens if I paste in some new values and they're not in exactly the same cells as they were last month? This approach assumes that checking account is going to be in C11 and will continue to be in C11. But what happens if the cell values change locations? Well, then we're going to have a problem. For example, what happens if I just change the sort order? Currently, cash and cash equivalents is 89882. What happens if I just change the source? Now I've resorted the data and now everything is broken. So it's inefficient and fragile. So what's a more efficient way to go from point A to point B? Well, it's by using a map, okay? And a map provides the translation. And it's going to give Excel all the information that it needs to go from these labels to these labels. And this is Excel, so there are many different ways to actually implement a map. And over this three-part series, we're gonna look at three different ways to implement a map. In this first video, we're going to use the sum ifs function. And the basic idea is that we want to use the sum ifs function to grab the values from the data and pull it into the map. And then we're going to use another sum ifs function to pull the values from the map and into this report. Okay, again, this is one of many different ways to implement a map, but the key feature of the map is that it provides the translations. Right? And so these are called map, mapping tables, lookup tables, transformation tables, different names, but the basic idea is it gives us the label translation. So what we wanna do is pull the values from the data into the map. The way that we're gonna do that is by using the sum ifs function. The sum ifs function is a conditional summing function, and its first argument is the column of numbers to add. So we want to add up this column of numbers, we just point to the range, comma, the remaining arguments come in pairs and each pair defines a condition. For example, I wanna add up all of the values in the amount column, but I only wanna include certain rows. That's a condition. I only want to include those rows where the account name, comma, is equal to our account name. Close the function and enter. And since we wrote this in a table, Excel is going to fill the, that formula down. So now we've pulled the values from the data table into the map, and now we just are going to use the same function, sum ifs, to pull the values from the map into the report. So once again, I want to add up this column of numbers, comma, I only want to include certain rows. I only want to include those rows where the fs line column, comma, is equal to our fs line. Close the function and enter. Now I can just copy that, paste, paste, and paste. 266313, 266313. I think we got it. Okay, so this is one possible way to implement a map to help us efficiently get from point A to point B. It's efficient because this is a consistent formula that I can fill down. It's more reliable because I, I can change the sort order. Let's say I change the sort order A to Z. Nothing breaks uh, because we're using sum ifs, which looks at the entire range, and so sort order doesn't matter. Okay, so this is one possible way to implement a map. In the next video, we'll take a look at another way. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.
This video is a production of Excel University. 